Hey everyone, welcome to Tim's Vinyl Confessions. I'm Tim Derling. Thanks for tuning in for uh, yet another episode. This isn't going to be a long one, but it's very topical based on uh, something that's been happening uh, that I read about a couple days ago. That HMV Canada is going into receivership. Not only that, but FYE in the States is uh, apparently going through some financial difficulties as well. I don't know if they have uh, the same parent company or not, but shame about HMV, they're one of the first, they're one of the remaining um, just music stores that are available to shop at, and uh, the closest one to me in Fredericton, uh, I have you know, great staff in there, I've, I've bought a few things in there, and it's just, it's a, it's shame, it's a real end of an era, um, I know there are some other bigger places, and for goodness sakes folks, uh, support uh, not only your local music stores, but buying physical music, I'll talk that talk about that in a little bit. I know it's um, Amazon and um, you know eBay online shopping. I know is is bit into that, and uh, just just buying music digitally and how easy it is to to do. But I just got me thinking about the wonderful memories I have of uh, first really getting into music and deciding that I didn't want to just record songs off the radio, which I guess would be the early equivalent of either downloading or or uh, streaming but buying blank cassette tapes and recording songs off the radio when around 87 when I really decided I want to you know I want to I want to invest I want to invest in an actual physical album it started as cassettes and of course it went to CDs and it kind of came back around to albums and, and then sometimes cassettes and 8-tracks too but just having a physical album and the excitement of having okay I've got this much allowance money saved up I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go buy something. I don't even. Sometimes I would have something in mind, particular that I want. Sometimes it's like I don't know. I'm just gonna go get something. This because when when you're first starting your music collection, it's a basically a much wider canvas, and you've got so many things that you don't have. So um, so I was born in '74. So that kind of puts me that that puts me in 1987 when I started purchasing music, and um, I didn't write these down. I'm just gonna kind of rattle these off the top of my head, but uh, I'm Canadian. And so, but I also lived right on the Canada-U.S. border, so I did get into the States and uh, purchase things too, but most of it was probably done in Canada, if I was to think about it. And uh, number one on my list was a famous record chain, a music chain that went all across Canada, and around 1984, 1985, they opened one up in my hometown of Woodstock, New Brunswick. And that's Sam the Record Man. If you're of a certain age and you're Canadian, you, you don't need any introduction of Sam the Record Man. Uh, there was a Sam. His name was Sam Snyderman. He used to appear in his commercials. You know, I said it, I did it. Um, and Sam the Record Man was a very successful chain for very many years. And they it's only been in the last couple of years that they, the last, I think the last remaining uh, Sam the Record Man store went out of business. But I bought a lot of music from Sam the Record Man. It was pretty much a set a week uh, locally and then uh, you know uh, when you were away, when I was away in Fredericton or Moncton, other places in New Brunswick, I would you know hit up Sam's and see what they had. But a lot of them came from you know walk down to the Sam the Record Man and and buy something. You know maybe be surprised, maybe not. Maybe I'd have something really in particular in mind and and there it would be. So uh, Sam the Record Man, uh, the second music chain that comes to mind that I shopped at was called ANAs, specifically ANA Records and Tapes. And um, I never did know what the ANAs stood for, but the first ANAs I remember shopping at was in the Fredericton Mall. It was, um, uh, if people know the Fredericton area, so you've got the upper end that used to be Target, and for many years was Zellers, and that's another story, but down at the opposite end, complete opposite end was ANAs and uh, I remember buying a lot of albums there and ANAs opened up in Woodstock in the mall in 1989 and they were there for a couple of years and I bought a lot of stuff from them too and uh, I that's where I discovered um, in their cutout or the cutout bin they'd have like a cheap bin of cassettes that's where I discovered the Vandenberg album um, the very first one and the second one among other things, so it was a band I probably never would have heard, heard well, for many, many years before. It hadn't been for that. A&A's eventually morphed into something called ROW, Records on Wheels, and that was uh, lasted for a while into the 90s, but not far into the 90s. 
Uh, Music World was another one. I don't know how old they were, but um, they opened up in Fredericton in the mid-90s, and I bought a few things there. I mean, at a certain point, I got the bulk of my collection built up, and then it was starting to replace cassettes with CDs and things like that. And buying a lot of vinyl, of course, when I started buying vinyl in the 90s, you didn't buy it new. There was nowhere to buy new vinyl, with a few exceptions. When the Kiss My Ass tribute album came out, Van Halen Ballads, there were a few places, a certain... Uh, releases that would come out on vinyl, but mostly it was Backstreet Records and Fredericton. Of course, vinyl, I'm happy to say, has made such a resurgence, and that I, you know, I'm about an hour away from from hitting it Backstreet still to this day. Now second spin, and um, so just uh, that gets back to the whole support thing. But uh, if I rewind back uh, further, you know, it's so different now that. Um, you know, if you go into Best Buy or, or even some Walmart stores and their music section shrinks and shrinks and shrinks, not just the music section, but the DVDs, movies, anything entertainment-wise, just, you know, very small. There was a time when every major department store had a decent music collection. I bought a lot of stuff at Zeller's in the Fredericton Mall. Found a lot of cassettes at Zeller's, and they had a nice music section, and Kmart had a nice music section. And... Um, Wolko. And these are the places where you'd find uh, rare albums, not even in the music section. Somewhere over in the middle of the store, there'd be a little bin full of cassettes that would you'd dig through. And look, I'm realistic. I, you know, I'm, I know I'm 42, and I'm not the target market for target market for a lot of music these days. But I wouldn't have a podcast uh, called Tim's Vinyl Confessions if I didn't get a little nostalgic now and then. That's kind of what it's about. Just that incredible, fun buying experience, which is why if you live somewhere where you've still got that, please support these places, you know. I'm not saying buy stuff you don't like, but just but just go in and look around, and you never know what you might find. And, and um, you know, if it's if it costs you $5 more to buy it there than it does from Amazon, spend the $5. You know, you're keeping somebody employed. <laughs> Amazon shoppers will find something else to buy. And look, I buy a lot of stuff from Amazon, too, because a lot of a lot of new albums that I like, a lot of new CDs that come out, they're on smaller labels. There's nowhere around here that's going to carry it. So I get that, and I'm not condemning shopping from Amazon. It is neat to get an item card in the mail, and you go, and voila, there is something. Uh, so s s switch attention over across the border, because uh, I, like I said, I live right on, I still do, very close to the main border, so right on the U.S.-Canadian border. Um, used to shop in Holton, Maine. A lot, and there was a department chain called Ames that I bought a ton of cassettes at uh, because they would, uh, especially when I was filling in old collections, you could get them really quite cheap. Uh, so I bought a lot of cassettes there. Um, a few times uh, for a few years, a bit the big trip in the summertime was going to Bangor, Maine, which is a couple hours away, especially when I was trying to fill in things like Journey. Sammy Hagar, especially Y&T, like American acts that you just didn't find in Canada. And I remember going to Bangor and not only finding things that I was looking for that I couldn't find anywhere else, but also finding things I didn't even know existed. And I, I've talked about this in some past TVC shows, Journey's Dream After Dream album. I thought I had all the Journey albums and then I stumbled upon that one. Um, the Joe Perry Project albums. I mean, this is pre-internet. I didn't know... Um, in 1990, when I was really, really, really getting into Aerosmith, I didn't know Joe Perry did anything in the years between 79 and 84. I had no idea that not only did he have a band, but they also had three albums, and the song Let the Music Do the Talking dates back to that first Joe Perry Project album. Um, you know, that's a good example there, too. And I'm sure there's many, many others. Vandenberg, I guess I found the third Vandenberg album. You just find things that you just couldn't find um, in Canada. and So, uh, I'm just trying to think of where I, I shopped. There was a Musicland. Musicland was a chain that uh, that had several stores I remember shopping at. Record Town was another big one. Uh, Record Town, which I believe is what either was morphed into or was bought out by FYE because they had a big store in Presque Isle, Maine, the Presque Isle Mall, and I shopped there a lot because they had a little, um, kind of looked like an ATM machine. Again, pre-internet, or at least pre-me having internet. It was really, there wasn't a lot of online shopping, but it was literally the closest thing to 
Amazon. You just, if you didn't see it in the racks, you punched it up. And if it was available, if it wasn't deleted, you could order it. You could print off a little ticket, go up to the cash, put a down payment on it, or pay for the whole thing. A couple weeks later, you'd get a call. Your CDs have arrived, and, and you'd go and get it. And I ordered a lot of stuff there, a lot of uh, rare CDs, catalog CDs. Ordered that way from Record Town. There was Record Town in Callis, too. Callis, Main's right on the St. Stephen border. That's where my good friend Matt Phillips grew up. Very similar to Woodstock, Holton, St. Stephen, Callis. And uh, I bought some a uh, few things at that store, too, whenever I'd go in there. And you, it, it was just, you know, if a new album was out that you were looking for, you know, it was one thing. But if you just went in and say, I wonder what's in here, and then you find something rare. There's just nothing like it. And that, it's not like that isn't possible now. It's just that the stores are shrinking. And the opportunity to, even like the department stores, like I said, you know, uh, even the Walmarts of the world, they're pretty limited as to what they carry. So um, I'm just curious out there, what record stores, record, it doesn't have to necessarily be a big chain, uh, be a big chain, but it can be. Just a place that you bought a lot of music when you were younger, or if there's places that you recommend that, because uh, I know a lot of us are concentrated in this one area, but there's a few of us. I know Todd's in Ontario. You know, where do you like to get um, your music? Where do you get your music? And just to add to this point, this, just this weekend, um, just for the point of um, purchasing physical music, because I still enjoy doing it, I bought a couple things at Walmart that I really had no use for. There's nothing on it I don't already have, but I just felt like I wanted to go up to the counter with a couple new CDs that I didn't have before, so I bought them. So I might as well show you what they are just for fun. This is things I've never had before. Uh, Very Best of Kiss. This is a compilation that came out in 2002, obviously on, they're still using Mercury Records at this point. Um, this is probably the best single disc Kiss compilation. Not that I ever wondered about it because I've made so many of my own over the years. But it's primarily makeup stuff, but it does have Lick It Up Forever and God Gave Rock and Roll to You on the tail end of this. So it's, it's pretty good. I, mean, I would have put Heavens on Fire here instead of one of the other songs. It doesn't have crazy, crazy nights on it, and again, it's never going to be the way that any one fan would do it. It's cool packaging. It's got a shot from them from the Paul Lind Halloween special. That's pretty cool. Um, there's not much. It does show where, where the, you know, the songs came from. I think it's cool they put New York Groove on here. Kind of makes it more of a, of a Kiss song. Hold that up there. If you see, it's from the album. Ace Freely, because it was the only hit single from from any of the Kiss solo albums from 78. So I bought that. That'll be good to pop in the car. And another thing I bought, I never did buy when it came out, is Led Zeppelin Mothership. This originally came out uh, around 2007, around the time that they did the, the show that was eventually recorded for Cele Celebration Day, the, the one they did in, in uh, London. And uh, this is a 2015 remaster which means it uses the new remastered versions of the songs which is kind of cool because I don't actually have any of those remastered Led Zeppelin albums as we Matt and I talked about when we did the Led Zeppelin Tim's Final Confessions. All this is is discs one and two that eventually appear that were on the uh, remaster set so there's there's nothing unreleased on here I, I would it's it's too bad they uh, it would have been nice if they to put uh, um, Oh, what's it called? Uh, it's, hey, hey, what can I do? This is live, folks. Uh, Traveling Overside Blues or Baby Come On Home, some of those unreleased uh, oddities. Um, There's a nice little booklet inside of it. and You've heard the name David Fricky from Rolling Stone. He, he does a, a write-up on the band here. And again, there's nothing different on it, but it's great music. And... Uh, you know, I just like showing, you know, in some small way that people do still like to buy their music in a hard copy, physical form. Look forward to doing some more Tim's Vital Confessions episodes. i got to be honest with you, I'm really, really craving a, a trip to um, you know, Moncton or another excursion to Fredericton. But we're, uh, we're in the dead of winter here right now. Sometimes, uh, you know, the weekend, the weather's not all that reliable. So, um, But I'm sure there will be this year, and I look forward to more more uh, Tim's Vinyl Confessions. But this is just a place I wanted to talk about uh, record stores, music stores, 
and, and interested in your feedback or some of the your favorite places or you know your 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 memories that are attached to finding music like i said even if it's at a department store and you found something there you've been looking for for a long time because you just never know thanks for watching this edition of tim's vinyl confessions